The fifth state in the union, but the first state in our hearts. The state of Connecticut has a long and storied history of success on and off the athletic fields. And 22 Threads is your go-to apparel brand for all things CT. Visit the 22 Threads website at www.22threads.com to shop their stores and blue-collar football apparel collections now. 10% of each item sold is donated to a local Connecticut nonprofit organization. Look good, do good, because you love CT. Okay, this is, this is crazy to me. I think for the last time now, we, we, we've got Jackson Mitchell joining us. Two years going strong here. Uh, I've always enjoyed doing these. So, Jackson, welcome back. Yeah, for sure. I appreciate you having me for one last time. Of, of course, and I'm really glad we get to come to this one. Coming coming off a nice win to end the season uh, at, at UMass. How did it feel going out with the win there uh, against a local regional rival uh, in your last game? It was good. Obviously, we kind of play them every year, so they've kind of become a little rivalry for us. And so anytime you play a team like that, you want to win. And no, knowing it's been like some of our seniors, like last game, we, we wanted to go out on top. And so that's what we did. We won the last two games and, and we went out as best as possible. I, I know like when we talked last year, it was like, oh, we're, we're you know, pushing towards these goals, you know, to let our seniors go out on a high note. With, with, with this being your last game as, as a Husky, you know, how did it feel to be able to pull out that win there and, and have, you know, probably the rest of the team pulling for situations you've been in the past with like, let's try to send our seniors out on a high note here. Uh, yeah, it was good. I, I never really try to make anything about myself or anything like that, but it, it was good to at least, you know, going, go out with a win. Cause you know, after, after that game, you're going to be emotional either way. So you'd rather it be with a win, you know? Um, so just being able to, you know, ha having your last memory with the, with the Yukon uniform being a, a win is, is huge for us. And, and something that the program can continue to build on going into next year. You know, t take me through what it's it's been like, you know, from that game ending to, to where we are now. Like, has it hit you completely that, you know, you played your last game a a as a Husky? Like, I I've got to imagine you've probably been just going through the whirlwind of uh, emotions lately. Yeah, definitely. I think that the, it really hit me at, right after the game when we were in the locker room and just seeing guys like Christian and Ewad and, and a bunch of us who, who know it was our last game and our last time like playing together um, as a whole, as that team, it, it was definitely emotional and bittersweet because there was a lot of good times here. And we've obviously been here a long time. Um, but but yeah, it's kind of hit me and I've kind of moved past it and start thinking about, you know, my future and things like that. But it definitely still is bittersweet. Obviously, I still have a few more weeks to finish up here and get some things taken care of before I leave. You you talk about that group, you know, that you're friendly with. You've been here for a while. You guys have competed. You know, what do you think, you know, you and your that that group ha has left here at UConn, you know, going through, you know, some highs and, and lows over your time here? Um, I just I don't know. I, I feel like we, we've done a good job of just being leaders. And, and I, I hope that, you know, we've showed a lot of guys that you don't have to necessarily like go somewhere else to fund your, the individual success you're looking for. And Obviously, last year we had a lot of team success, um, more than we've had in the past. So that's also very capable here. And, and you know, everything you want is capable here. And I feel like we've we've had a chance to kind of show that as, as like our careers play out. Like that's kind yeah. of what we show to them and giving them like hope that, you know, it's definitely possible here and it's exciting. And, and I wouldn't have rather done any, any other way either. It's kind of weird when you, you look, you know, how results play out, you know, wins and losses. You look at how analytics play out. And if you look at some analytics, they have this year's team as a better team from an analytics standpoint than, than last year's team. Yeah. Do you feel like this program is, you know, going in that right direction, even though it might not have shown in, in the wins and losses in the scoreboard this year? Yeah, I definitely do. And I think, um, I think this year has taught a lot of guys a lot of different things. And I think maybe last year, some, some of the things that didn't go our way this year, they kind of fell in our direction last year. And that's kind of where how we ended up with those six wins. And you know, the schedule was a little tougher this year, but with the same amount of, of winnability, I would say, you know, yeah. we definitely left some things out there. And there was a lot of one possession games that could have went our way. And we could be having a different conversation, you know, this week talking about uh, one last game. But uh, it, it is tough. But I think this team definitely like showed a lot of improvements and they've showed me a lot this year. And I'm excited about their future because I think there's still a lot of talent here and and Coach Moore is obviously an amazing coach. He's probably one of the best coaches I've ever had the chance to play for. So for him to kind of just continue continue on what we started here and, and hopefully he just builds on it in the future.
what was his kind of final message to the team, you know, in the locker room, you know, season comes to an end coming off that win the other day. Yeah. I think he just, he, for he like thanked all the seniors obviously and thanked us for all the work we put in, especially the guys that have been here for so long through all the ups and downs, you know, we kind of fought it out. Um, so he thanked us and he, he thanked the entire team for continuing to fight. Cause it's not easy. You know, when you, when you only got one win for, for majority of the season, it's not easy to continue to fight and want to come come to practice and work hard and and work hard in meetings and watch film and things like that and I think the guys did a good job at that regardless of our record um so he was thankful for that and then you know following that he, he kind of talked to the guys that are going to come back next year and said that there's still a lot to improve on and there's still a lot of goals coming for next year and and they they have to get started you know right away if, if that's what they want to accomplish I know in, in basketball you, you tend to see some of those guys who might not see action on the court you know in the end of the game when the game's kind of out of hand I know you, you saw some guys come into the game against UMass that you haven't seen all year you know in those last you know kind yeah. of four or five minutes there what was it like for you getting to see some of those guys get in the game yeah it was super exciting because you know the, especially those guys on offense that got in um when we played, played Sacred Heart they were supposed to get in but but the defense couldn't get a stop for them to get in those last three minutes of the game so it was definitely important to get them in during the UMass game and you know us as a defense, we play against a lot of those guys on scout team for the majority of the year, and they really work really hard and deserve that opportunity. And so it was exciting to see a guy like Hunter Clark out there getting a big run and, and someone like Will Meyer, who, who's playing his last college football game to get his opportunity as well. I think it was really exciting and um, it was really good for them. And it, it was ha- I was happy to see that. As you know, you think about what's next for you, take me through what the next, you know, kind of couple months look like for you as you get ready to you know try to take that next step in your career yeah so I'll, I'll relax you know rest of my body and start working out a little bit um this month of december and then um i'll go off in january and train um I, um I don't know exactly where yet but i have a good idea so i'm gonna go off and train for a few months and hopefully see um what opportunities i get you know I, right now i have the hula bowl hopefully some more opportunities come that way for another senior bowl or all-star game, that type of thing. And then um, uh, obviously pro day and combine as well. And then after that, you know, see where the chips fall, but uh, I've obviously excited and it's something I've always dreamed of. So I'm definitely excited for the opportunity and just grateful to be in this position. For sure. And I know you talk about resting up the body, which I'm sure everyone needs at this time of the year. For those of us who who haven't really played football and haven't played, especially at your level, what's the body like at this point in the year, you know, as the seasons come, you know, come to an end? Yeah, it's definitely banged up. And I think, um, you know, I do a good job of taking care of my body, but there's always you know, little things here and there, a lot of you know nagging things throughout the season. You, you've seen a lot of our guys kind of struggle with that throughout the season, but that's kind of just normal football stuff I think um a few weeks ago I think Ryan Griffin came back he had played for UConn and he was on yeah. the Jets and that type of thing he came back and he talked to Bob and he was saying how after he retired it was the first time he realized like like it's normal for your body to like not feel that stuff you know for so long we kind of think it's like normal to wake up with a lot of aches and pains and stuff but uh it's actually not that that normal especially during the season um so no, just it, it's good to have some time off where you can kind of kick your feet up and, and let your legs recover and get that, you know, your legs get a little fatigued throughout the season. So you kind of get that energy back and you get a new life, I think. I, I know one thing that, you know, kind of made headlines the past, you know, couple of weeks. And now as we head into the off season, obviously, you know, a lot of talk around NIL and things like that. You know, what are your thoughts, you know, now that you're leaving the program and, you know, kind of seeing for the future, what's your message kind of to, to the fan base. I know, no coach Moore talked a little bit about it. We've seen what bleeding blue for good, you know, the Demelio Huskies collective is done. How important is that going forward for UConn football? Yeah, I think um, regardless of kind of what you, what you think of it as an individual, you know, I have definitely have my opinions on where NIL has gone and where it was supposed to go, I think. Um, yeah. But at this point, like that's kind of where college football is moving and, and it's, it's tough. And obviously it's for a school like us, it's definitely tough being a smaller football school right now. And there's other schools in our position. It, it's tough to try to compete with those guys that, that, you know, can offer a whole bunch of money that kind of, we don't really have at, at the moment. So it is tough. And, you know, you see a lot of smaller schools losing their best players to big schools. Cause you know, they'll go for one or two years and then yeah. they go get more money. So it's definitely a tough situation, but I think, um, as much as like the fans can support and, and, and do what they can do to kind of 
support the program. It's definitely going to be huge going forward um, because that's kind of where college football is at right now until they kind of make a change towards that. But I think um, I think it will be worth it. I know it's tough. You know, when you don't see the results, it, it's tough to kind of want to make that investment. But but I know the guys work hard and, and they don't take that kind of stuff for granted. And I think um, it will be worth it. And, and next year, I expect a lot from this team for sure. I'm going to take a quick break from the interview to tell you about my friends at Martin Rosal's Meats. This fourth generation Connecticut family business produces kielbasa, hot dogs, sausages, and deli meats using Martin Rosal's very own original recipes. Their products can be found in grocery stores, delis, restaurants, and hot dog stands throughout the state. And if you're looking for your fill right away, check out their retail store in New Britain. For more information, visit martinrosalsinc.com and go support a Yukon fan owned business. And now back to the interview. Yeah, I know. It's uh, college football is definitely, I'm sure, has changed a lot from even just when you started as, yeah, a, as freshman. a freshman. Yeah, it's so different. Last year was my first year of NIL, I think. So my first three years were completely different. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, now, now you probably seem like the like the really old guy in the locker room. You're like, back yeah. in my day, we didn't we didn't have any of that. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to just, uh, as we kind of like look back at, you know, on your UConn career, just kind of talk some of the the favorites here. So I, I want to know, you've gotten to go to some really cool places to, to play games. Where, where's your favorite place that you got to go through through football? Um, I thought, I think, I, I think Tennessee was the coolest because that was the most like, like how you kind of see it on TV, like yeah. the possible atmosphere and, and just the, how loud the crowd got and that SEC environment was so awesome to see. And, and, you know, obviously they were playing UConn, but they, they, the stadium was sold out and it was packed and they were loud. And I think that was kind of really cool to see. Cause that's kind of really what the height of college football is like for sure. Yeah. What, what What's like a, a memory you're going to look back on outside of like the football itself, like, you know, doing something with the team, you know, whether it's going to the beach or whatever, you know, outings, yeah. things like that. What's something you're going to look back on and be like that. That was, you know, my, my favorite thing, you know, during my time at UConn. Uh, um, I think, you know, last year after the season we had, before we, we started practicing for the bowl game, we had like a, we had a seven on seven flag game between the, the students that worked for the media staff, like the video guys and the, and the students that worked in recruit or in work with equipment. So like yeah. they, so they were going back and forth and I think there's some lost footage of it somewhere, <laughs> but it was really, um. It was really cool to see. It was really funny for us to kind of sit back and relax and watch other people kind of play football. <laughs> I, I, I've got to ask, uh, f- favorite dairy bar flavor? Um, I'm kind of plain and I'm, uh, I don't like, I'm allergic to nuts and stuff, so I can't eat too much stuff, but, but I'm like a strawberry guy. I like strawberry milkshakes, that type of thing, but, uh, it's all good. Honestly, I wish it was still in the student <laughs> union cause I would get it every day. <laughs> Oh, you know, I, I, I know we, we get to see a certain side of coach Mora, you know, from the outside in, in his interactions with us. What's like your favorite, you know, memory that you'll have of coach Mora? maybe something, you know, aside of him, we, we don't get to normally see. Um, we, we don't want to get you in trouble, but like something. So no, yeah, I think he's just, he's real funny. I think during the media and, and and obviously on the field, he's he's really serious, and you guys probably see the more serious side of him. But I think he he is really funny, and he's obviously been around a whole bunch of football players in his time, you know, NFL and college. So so he has a good job of kind of relating to players, even though you know he might be a little older than us. Uh, but he he's definitely really funny, and he cracks some good jokes. He likes to kind of him and PC um, Pat Collins. He like they like to you know crack on people when when they can. So I think they're definitely funny. All right. I, I know we, we don't know what the roster might look like next year, but from the guys, you know, um, you know, just from who you played with, you know, if they're back, wh- however that all plays out, who are you most excited to see on the field next year? Um, I think I, I think it starts with that defensive line, because I think, you know, three of the, the four starters are coming back. Um, Aside from Ewa, you know, you have Lonnie, Dal and Price. And I think all of those guys took huge steps forward and it was so awesome to see them play obviously Lonnie was was kind of the star of the the team this year it's exciting to see him score touchdowns and and make plays all over the field on defense um so I expect a lot from him next year and he's obviously my roommate so so I'm excited to watch him play again and then um you know Price is kind of he's a quiet guy but but he works so hard and I know he's going to work hard again this offseason and and 
having a lot more production than he had this year, even though he had more production than he had last year, you know? So I think um, those guys on the defensive line, I'm excited to watch because obviously I get to play, I got to play behind them for, for two, three years. So to be able to now just watch them on TV and watch them work, it will be exciting. Yeah. Well, uh, as always, uh, there, there's only one way we end these and it's, it's usual giants talk coming off two in a row since we, we last spoke. Yeah. Uh, I, I know you were we were talking a little like tank action there, but uh, I mean now, uh, I mean what what are they four four wins now? Yeah, four and eight. You know, uh, Tommy DeVito. I think the fans are saying uh, don't don't sleep on a nine and eight season. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> maybe they can sneak in the wild card if if they if they win out. But uh, yeah, he's been playing actually really good, and, and that's awesome to see seeing an undrafted guy kind of come in and. Obviously, the fans love him. He's from Jersey, so he, he's got he, he's bringing his own type of you know attitude to the team, which is exciting to see. I, I, I've just got to ask because it's obviously nothing I'll ever be in the position. But like growing up a, a a Giants fan, like I mean, there is a chance you could end up on the Giants. Does that ever like get in the back of your head? Like, hey, I could end up playing for the team I've I've grown up rooting for. Yeah, that I mean that would be awesome. I feel like any team in this area would be awesome because I I have friends that are fans of the Giants, Jets, Patriots, Steelers. Like, so all the teams in this area would obviously be awesome. But and I'd take anything. Is you know, it's always been a dream to be just put on that helmet, let alone yeah. playing a game or or play for a team. Uh, so I was, the Giants would be would be awesome, and I know all of my friends would would know I'd, how excited I would be if that happened. But I'd take anything. Awesome. Well, Jackson, I, I know it hasn't always been easy coming on these. Uh, you know, it's you, you've gone through a lot during your time at UConn and some highs and lows. And I've always appreciated you just coming on, being open, talking through everything and uh, going to miss having you on next year. So uh, uh, best of luck in what's next. And I, I'm sure we'll have to have you on again at some point, whether we're getting closer to draft day, whenever. We'll, yeah. we'll have to have you back on at some point. This won't this won't be goodbye for good. Yeah, I appreciate you. I appreciate all all the time you've kind of spent and helping me out with this. And it's been really fun. And getting to talk about the games and, and the Giants every week has been really fun for me. And I appreciate it. Is it one more? Because, of course, this this just is it going to be weird, like next year on a Saturday to be able to throw on a UConn football game and, and just watch it? Yeah, it's so different because obviously, even when I was a freshman, I when I when I wasn't playing, I was still traveling to every game. Yeah. So I've really never had a chance to watch our game on tv except like after the game when i turn it on I yeah watch it myself but uh so it will be weird and and I, I always think it's weird when i'm watching the tv and it's there's guys on the f- field i know you know <laughs> like when you turn on the nfl you don't really know any of them maybe you might know one guy but like yeah t- turning on the the field or turning on the game and being able to know like every single person on the field will definitely be a little weird <laughs> well jackson again always appreciate it thank you so much uh can't wait to see what you do at the at the next level i know everyone's gonna be rooting rooting big time for you so thanks again as always yeah i appreciate it appreciate all the support as well